means that you cannot, uh, you know, do things with people in person. And so, you know, the, 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 the you know, what JeepJob does uh, is, is very important to basically fill that gap. And birthdays are one of these events uh, that in quarantine cannot be celebrated in person. So we, we saw, I, I wouldn't say like that opportunity because it's also a business. So it's also like a business opportunity, but I feel like that in that specific moment, it was very important for us to give our subscribers uh, a tool to, you know, basically connect uh, with their loved ones. Um, and like you were, what you were saying before, you know, it's also true because we have created tens of new birthday cards, but also we have focused on creating some pieces specific for what is happening uh, in the world. And uh, so these like quarantine birthday, it's probably one of the piece of content with the fastest turnaround we have ever created in Jibja because I feel like that we made it in something short of a week. Uh, and uh, I, I cannot share the numbers, but has been one of the most successful pieces in our library in the past month. And that tells how creating like a content, a piece of content that is like high quality, relevant, uh, really clicks with, you know, our our audience. And also we have like a, a funny piece, which is called like F2020 for, you know, everyone that's uh, <laughs> had enough of this 2020 and is like hopeful that 2021 will be like a better year. So we, we like to do that thing, you know, things are like tragic for a lot of people, but you know, laughter sometimes is like the best medicine. Totally. Couldn't agree more. And, uh, and on that point, it looks like the video is ready. So let's, uh, let's cue the video and, and show an example jib jab. Oh man, <laughs> that is so great, and and uh, and so I love you. I love you as a baby swimming. <laughs> that was I like the best I like riding on the back of your unicorn. <laughs> oh yeah, or me hugging a pizza. Uh, it, that's it's so good. You you cannot. Uh, there's no way to not smile when when you're when you're watching those. Um, so it just seeing that example i mean there's there's so much work that goes into that right there's there's the content licensing right? it looks like you have the jonas brothers in there um there's the the artistic process how many how many people like talk to me about your team how many people are involved in in creating a jib jab and, and how long does it take um so we have like uh different formats in jib jab so we have the standard e cards uh, uh which are the one minute one minute and 30 uh, and those are the one that usually I would say, depending on the technique, but right now that we cannot, you know, have like sh live shootings and, you know, um, so everything is like uh, motion design. Uh, so I would say that for like an e-card that we're talking about like a month in terms of like production and um, uh, clips are our new format. Uh, and they're like 20 seconds long. Uh, the difference between clips and e-cards is that, uh, you know, clips can be shared via text message. So it makes it even easier to share in like a short format. Uh, and then we have music videos, uh, and this is like licensed content. We apply the starring you magic to it. Uh, um, and then we have like, you know, GIFs, um, which are like the free content that you can find in our app. So. It really depends on uh, it really depends on the moment. Like I said, like the the quarantine birthday, we basically summon all the production power in the team and uh, 
um, we gave us like a hard deadline and that was it. Uh, but I would say that the clip is usually like uh, two to three weeks, uh, you know, an e-card a month to a month and a half. Uh, but we don't have like an incredibly big, uh, you know, creative team. Uh, we have like a few animators, uh, a couple of like production artists, uh, uh, three designers and so forth. So it, it's really like, like I was saying in the beginning, you know, it's like such a small passionate team that whenever we have a new project, uh, you know, everyone is so excited and that is like fuel, you know, for me, because there is nothing better than when you have a team, you know, you don't have to motivate them, you know, they almost motivate me and I just need to tell them like, hey, we're gonna do this, you know, uh, we're gonna do this project, you know, any ideas and, you know, it's just, it's just a fun, fun, interesting process. Yeah, see, seeing that, um, the the clip that we shared uh, really makes me think that your your team must have a lot of fun uh, in, in the idea room and just kind of brainstorming what, what you can do. Like so many of those ideas are uh, just, just so off the wall and so fun. Um, how do you decide like what ultimately makes it in in the jib jab? And I mean, I, I assume there's so many ideas coming out of, of your team. And obviously, just talking to you for a little bit, I can tell you're a creative guy. But uh, how do you decide what makes the final cut? Um, well, some sometimes it's very hard because my role, you know, in my role, I have to pick one, you know. But sometimes it's very hard because, you know. Uh, when we brainstorm, like uh, every single person, you know, comes up with like interesting uh, ideas. Uh, um, we have access to data. So GJob uh, uh, is a very creative company, but we're like data driven. So we see, we look at the data, we see, uh, it, you know, the numbers, you know, around like a specific card or a specific topic or a specific scene. So we know what is working, you know, all the ingredients. So if you sprinkle a little bit of dance, if you sprinkle, you know, this kind of music, if it's like a cast five during a specific holiday, we know that by putting these ingredients together, there is a very high chance of success. But, uh, I, you know, I'll tell, it's, it's, it's hard, you know, sometimes it's hard because I am overwhelmed, not just by my ideas, but by the team's ideas. So, um, but um, um, I'm happy to say that, like, if, if I look back uh, um, the past two years uh, of, of the content that we have created, uh, you know, the, the numbers, uh, you know, are, are, are very good. You know, we have changed something uh, since, you know, when you look back at the previous, uh, you know, content collection. So we have started to do something new, more modern, um and, and it's uh resonating with our audience so we're 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 pretty happy cool and i i love the uh the animation um versus uh kind of live shooting um was that something that happened um post quarantine or after quarantine or was that happening were you already experimenting with the kind of uh digital animation um that was like one of the thing when i came on board that i wanted to you know uh, promote more within the team uh, which was like you know character animation you know compared to live uh, we had uh, a lot of like content uh, with like actors and green screen and and, and all of that uh, um but uh i feel like that you know by doing character animation we would have been able to create like more whimsical animation like you were quoting before the me and you riding the unicorn i mean that is something that you know it didn't take long uh, as an animation i mean if we had to do that in a studio it would have been more costly and uh, with less option for you know customization so this is definitely but we're not ruling out you know like you know right now it's not doable but you know we were supposed to do a couple of things uh with like actors uh, but then you know uh, covid uh arrived uh, and uh you know changed our plans yep no and it seems like uh you guys are doing such a such a good job rolling with the punches and it, it seems like the ability to create um you know more more whimsical content uh and, and be even more responsive with how quickly you're getting it out 
seems like in this in this time uh, it's really important to be responsive and adaptive to what's happening um i i had the pleasure of moderating a, a fireside chat with um someone from uh Pernod ricard a few weeks ago and she was mentioning how consumer behavior is changing so much like right after quarantine everyone ran to the store and bought as much box wine as they could and, and was <laughs> stocking up on like really cheap stuff and then over time uh, people have realize that this is going to happen for a while and now they're buying $300 bottles of wine to have at home. Um, so I imagine like, you know, consumer and subscriptions, what they're doing on the internet, um, behavior is changing like within quarantine. It's not just like now that it's quarantine, uh, you know, everyone's doing the same thing, but even within quarantine, are you seeing that, um, you know, user behavior and, you know, subscriptions, um, uh, were, did they like jump up a lot at the very beginning of quarantine or was was there a lag until people realized they, they were going to be home longer? Um, I, I would say that we have seen like a spike as, uh, you know, the same as like most of the digital companies, uh, especially in the beginning uh, when people were more like panicking, when they felt like it was the end of the world and, you know, supermarkets were like raided and, and all of that. Uh, I also think that people had like way more time uh, to spend like on the digital space. Uh, um, so we have seen like a, a, a steady increase for, for the business uh, uh, because at, at the end of the day, I mean, I mean, the reason why people love Jeep Jab content is, is often related to the reaction of the receiver of the content is, is, is like, yes, you as the giver are like, oh, this is funny. But, you know, again, it's the receiver that makes the, you know, look very successful. So during quarantine, again, you want to cheer up people in, you know, like I, I, I realized that Jeep Jab, uh, especially in the first month, month and a half, has been very good for like, uh, you know, people's mental health. I mean, we got a lot of great feedback, you know, about that, because again, like I was saying before, most of the time, Jeep job is like a one to one, you know, share, you know, you don't share it on social media. I'm sharing to you for the specific goal of making you happy or cheer you up or sharing with you uh, the, the love that I have for you. So. At the end of the day, there is nothing better than make someone you love, you know, happy with just a couple of clicks on your phone. And and Jeep Jab provides that, you know, you take a photo and immediately you have like thousands of like funny videos that you can share with someone you love. And there there has never been like a better period to do that than like these lockdown. Yep. No, that makes sense. Um and I, I think it's so interesting when you talk about one to one sharing of content versus um, it seems like the more I, I like your food analogy a lot where more fast food content, you know, memes that come out every day, they're they're cheap and fast and they're they're really built for one to many uh, sharing. Right. They, they want you to put it yeah. on you know, your wall and have other people share it and try to you know, go viral. And and jib jab is a lot more about having. Uh, I mean, going going viral, but but with with many one one to one uh, you know exchanges of content, um, is is that intentional? Is that part of the business plan, or is that more more just a result of it being personalized content? I think it's uh, I, I think it's intentional. I mean, I, I, again, I strongly believe that you know uh, we're so used to gifts uh, and memes, you know, they, they are integrated pretty much everywhere to the point where someone sends you a gift, you're just scrolling, you know? Um, so the idea with Jeep job, like I said before, you know, it's like a video. So it's something that you, that you receive, uh, you hit play. And the point is that your face is in that video and up to five friends or, you know, family, whatever. So it's really like a moment where you receive the content that again, it's been a content that we have created sometimes even a couple of months to create the piece of content. So we're talking about super high production value. And so that's why, you know, people pay for Jeep job. They're not paying, it's not free because again, the content we create has like a very high, you know, value and not just for us, it's not just production, but it retains like a great value when you share it with someone you love. And that's why for us, the 
share via text message, share via email are still like very valuable because it means it creates a, it's a meaningful connection between you and someone you love. So you're less interested in sharing on social media. Yep, makes sense. Although, um, although a lot of people share on social media. Yep. No, definitely. And I, I, I remember seeing, uh, 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 you know, political season, uh, may, maybe eight years ago or, or 12 years ago, even seeing, uh, um, everything on Facebook was people sharing like, a, 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 a jib jab, um, with some political figures and stuff. So it, it, it's like there's certain ones, uh, certain jib jabs that come out that are, are shared a lot more on, yeah. on social yeah. in like one to many ways. Um, and, and I imagine those, those do bring on spurts of user acquisition. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about, uh, the, the business strategy around how you're acquiring more users. Um, cause obviously with one-to-one, -one, uh, you know, content exchange, you don't really have the, uh, the same potential to, to go viral as other platforms where that are more one-to-many. Um, so how, how are you, uh, how are you acquiring new users? Is it through traditional advertising or, or what else? Um, so like we you know jeep job used to be a, a or perceived used to be perceived as a seasonal company you know so you go to jeep job during christmas and halloween or like valentine's day uh because the funny thing for instance and valentine's day jeep job was like the um uh, so if you forget to give you know a gift to your girlfriend and uh, it's too late you can always go to jeep job uh, and buy uh, a nice card and that's like you know um that that's great so during these specific times uh, we advertise pretty much everywhere so we have tv ads we have radio ads uh, uh i i don't think to my memory that we do like any print uh, you know ads uh, but we do a lot of facebook i mean facebook uh, you know instagram google um but facebook is by far our main channel for you know advertising um our content um and uh, yeah that's 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 pretty much it i don't know if it answer yeah. in the specifics but you know no I'm no the that's, i'm that's the creative definitely... guy so it's just like a um a big picture of of what we do but we definitely spend a massive amount of uh, of our you know like revenues in 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 advertising because like you were saying before you know word of mouth is not is not enough to generate the volume that um uh, that we have so yep no and, and i imagine though that um it is a very creative process to uh to bring users through the funnel like getting someone to go to jib jab um you know is one thing but what is uh, I, I think you have a way that for free, someone can can upload their face and create create a jib jab and see like a couple seconds of it um, before uh, and then and then they they pay for a subscription before they can share it and, and things like that. Um, so it, sorry, go ahead. No, no, yeah, yeah. I was saying that for instance, in the app, uh, if you go in the app, uh, it's it's you know you can you can browse. The gifts are free. Uh, we have some very specific pieces of content that are free, which usually are like partnership with like brands um, or influencers. Uh, and then you can absolutely preview every single piece of content. But you know, if you want to send it, that's that's where when you're hit with the pay gate, and that's where you have to subscribe. Yep. So to everyone listening right now, this is important. My my birthday is in 16 days. Uh, <laughs> I'm having a quarantine birthday. Um, so if you want to send me a jib jab, that would that would make me smile. Um, so so Maro, uh, aside from um, jib jab, I know you mentioned. Uh, so uh, just just for the audience, fun, funny thing, uh, I I run a beard oil company. Um, so Maro has a great beard. I offered to send him some some beard. <laughs> Uh, he he has a candle company um, and offered to send me send me one of his candles. So it's it's cool. Uh, we're we're both doing creative kind of side side projects. Um, when you're working with your your team at Jib Jib, um, are are most of the people you're working with like full full time on on Jib Jab or uh, is your team um, like contractors or uh, you know it it just seems like a, a really creative group. So I'm curious how you how you prepare for that team. 
I, I would say that the ratio is probably 90% full times and 10% contractors. So we really be, I mean, if we find talents that are not in a lay, uh, of course, you know, we, we go with the, you know, contractor option. Uh, but, you know, and this is like something that might change in the future because again, you know, working from home and all of that uh, has changed the dynamics. Uh, uh, but we, uh, you know, having the people, you know, here in LA uh, has created a very strong group. You know, we bonded a lot. So right now when we have to do things, it's almost like autopilot. You know, there is very little, you know, um, management in terms of like the creative team you know we know our task and we you know we and even with the with the contractors you know so yeah. but that's that's the ratio as of now but i'm pretty sure that in the future uh if all of this will will stay as it is uh, the situation you know this ratio will probably uh skew more towards uh contractors yep understood um so I want to ask a question that we we didn't really talk about in our in our prep too much, but uh, just talking to you now, um, I, I'm fascinated to learn where where your head's at. Um, so you know, mo mobile, uh, you know, obviously, like everyone's got a phone in their pocket, probably the fastest, easiest way to to create a jib jab. Um, but with with other kind of you know emerging screens, connected television, uh, you know, everyone has uh, you know. A, a, I mean, people are starting to you know, have VR devices at home and all of these other ways of, uh, you know, internet enabled devices. Are you thinking about other screens and emerging media and uh, and what jib jab can do in, in other environments from a creative perspective? Or is there anything you can share? Um, so th that's a very interesting question. Uh, so in the past, uh, we we had some we had some apps. You know, uh, there was a, a point in the history of JeepJob where we uh, focused on creating like satellite apps uh, uh, as a experiment almost, you know, and, and we have done like something with AR. So we had these like JeepJob characters that you could, you know, drop the, into like a physical space. Uh, um, so we, we have done that and, uh, you know, we are always aware of the you know, innovation, uh, new technologies. Uh, um, so as of now, we're not focused on that specifically. So we're not thinking about VR or AR. Uh, we have been working for the past three months uh, on a big uh, side project for JeepJab, like a product extension. I cannot share like details. Oh, <laughs> I know I cannot share details as of now, but uh, um, I, I, I would say that it's far from like VR. So it's something more traditional that retains the spirit of Jeep job, which is like, uh, giving something funny and very personalized, almost intimate to someone you love. So we really wanted to push more towards that direction. And so I think we will announce it soon probably uh in a couple of months uh, but that has been the team task for the past two three months so yeah cool well i'm i'm uh i'll be following uh and, and excited <laughs> to see that announcement um when when it happens um can you tell me a little bit about uh you know obviously so you told me about kind of your team um uh, but just kind of working from home, how has it changed the uh, the kind of brainstorming and content development process? Obviously, you can't be all you know, you know giggling in a room with a whiteboard uh, the way you used to. But has has uh, has it impacted the creative process? Not being able to be in person with your with your team. Um, another interesting question. Uh, so. It hasn't impacted my team because like I said before, we have been working together for the past, uh, you know, five years. So, I mean, the team has bonded so much uh, that we're working on a telepathic level almost right now. <laughs> so I can just say, hey guys, we have to do this, uh, you know, 
a video for Halloween and then the idea comes in, everyone knows who's going to do what. Um, the challenge, to be honest, uh, um, the challenge I will face if this working from home uh, will stay is like when you have new team members, you know, <laughs> because you haven't spent a single minute with them in person, you know, they have never been in a meeting with everyone else. Uh, so that training part uh, will be more challenging, of course. And that is something that I'm pretty sure a lot of companies are, are facing. And we have hired people uh, between the beginning of quarantine and now, not specifically in my creative team. And it's been interesting to see, you know, how these new hires, you know, uh, warmed up to, you know, working together with, with us. So it's it's a challenge for sure. You know, something that we are facing just now that no one before this like coronavirus would have thought. Um, so uh, it, it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. But I always feel like that creative people are somehow used to live into this like creative world. Uh, um, so it's probably gone. It, it's not gonna be like incredibly, you know, challenging. That's what I hope. Yep. Yeah, I've I've experienced the same thing at Spaceback. Um, so so our company we we recreate social media content uh, and it, so it can run as programmatic ads for brands. And we work with Nike and Audi and Walmart and some some pretty large brands. Um, but we're we're finding that our biggest challenge is really on the camaraderie side, like business productivity and how we communicate hasn't been as much of a challenge. Like we're we're all pretty good at working from home. Um, it's more like exactly like you're saying with new team members not being able to to share a laugh um you know together you know it's it's just a lot harder to get to know each other and i really believe that good uh good work culture is about being accountable to other people more so than accountable to your job um you know you do a task because you know your coworkers depending on you you doing it not because it's in your job description yeah, um, yeah. And, and i think that that's one of the harder things to to create so it's it's awesome to see that uh, you know your team is working so well together and really continuing to create super innovative content. That if if anyone here hasn't seen the quarantine birthday, um, I'm sure you can look on on Facebook and see one of your Facebook friends having having a quarantine birthday and and send them a jib jab. And it really does like cheer. I mean, it's just fantastic content, uh, and it really does cheer people up. I, I like I said, you you can't not smile when seeing it. Um, I want to open up uh, questions from the audience um, since we only have a few more minutes uh, and already have a couple. So, Maro, I'm going to I'm going to read a question from the audience for you here. Um, this one is about reducing media budgets um, as many brands have reduced. And I know you're less on the paid media side of things and more on the creative side. So. Um, uh, so this question might not be, um, directed, right? I'll, I'll try, I mean, I'll try to, I'll try to answer. I mean, I have some knowledge. I'm not like the expert in the company. That's why we hire like better people than me. Uh, but yeah, I'll try to answer for sure. Yeah. So, so the question is, um, how is your plan uh, adjusted in the paid media world? And, um, and I guess with regards to like what channels you advertise on Facebook and other places, um, but have, Since have you COVID? gotten more of yeah have you since COVID? have you gotten more creative or more efficient with your your media plan and media strategies in any ways to my knowledge uh 